What's going on everyone? My name is Priyag Jifani. I am an MD MBA student here at the Yale School of Medicine and I wanted to talk to you today about Anki Fundamentals 101. I know the first year medical students have just started and I know that um, you know August is also the time of year when people are starting school in high school, college, and beyond. And so because of that I wanted to make this video because Anki is actually one of the tools that you can use to study effectively and this is usually the time when people are learning to do that. So if you want to learn about the fundamentals of Anki, this video is for you. So let's just jump straight into it. What is Anki? It's actually a flashcard application that facilitates studying. It's free to download online. And if you use it on your desktop, whether that's a Windows or a Mac, it's entirely free. But if you want it on your phone, it's about $25. With all of that being said, um, I do want you to realize that Anki is just one of the few tools that I have used to study in medical school. And before that, I used Quizlet. Rest assured, regardless of which one you use, you will still do fine, and I think flashcards are usually the name of the game and will really help you um, ultimately achieve whatever it is you want to achieve in studying. However, there are certain things about Anki that I think need to be rectified. I've made a lot of videos in the past about Anki, and I'm going to link some of them below to get you all oriented on Anki. This is going to be the 101 course. This is going to be the high yield stuff that works. But if you really want to know the details, the stuff that's worked for me, I'm going to link them before, below. With all of that being said, I think the problem is a lot of people have started thinking that Anki and just memorizing everything is the answer to the world's problems. Unfortunately, it's not. People have gotten into this rhythm where they download a pre-made deck or they start making a bunch of flashcards and they think if they memorize all those flashcards, they will do well. What they're missing here is this basic insight in study strategies and study skills. And that's ultimately what will take you far. Anki is a skill but it is not the answer to everyone's problems because everyone just thinks that if they memorize 20,000 flashcards, they'll get it. And believe me, you will not do well if you use Anki to just brute force memorize things. You need to follow the 101 formula that I'm about to share with you because otherwise it's useless. Trust me on this. I have talked to too many individuals to count and I can tell you it all boils down to the same thing. So with that, let's start with the first high yield principle today, which is the organization. We're going to talk about organization of Anki, then we're going to go into the basics, and then I'm going to show you a real life demo of how I would use Anki effectively. And the same steps will be applicable regardless of what you use, whether that's take notes, you make your own flashcards, you use Quizlet, whatever it is, everything I'm about to teach you is more study strategy oriented as opposed to purely flashcard based. With that being said, the way to organize things is not that difficult. You always want to do it chronologically. And you want to do, for example, week one, week two, week three, week four. So if you're making flashcards, just like how if you had a notebook, you would go in order. You start with lecture one, then you go to lecture two, three, four. And then when, you went, when the midterm came around, you'd review all your lectures. It's the same when you're making flashcards. You want to start with week one, week two, week three, week four. And you'll see that within each of these weeks, there's a plus sign next to the Anki icon. And what that means is within each week, I actually then have broken things down into lectures as well as different things that I did in that week. So whether that's a team-based learning exercise, whether that was an anatomy lab, whatever it was, it was all under the week one category. Just by having this organization in the flashcards you do, again, it could be an Anki, Quizlet, uh, even your notebooks. Just by having this organization, you'll be able to make sure you overarchingly understand where everything is coming from. So this is really important because a lot of people don't organize your decks well, and because of that, they just try to memorize everything, and it's a mess. It is absolutely a mess. So with that being said, please follow this organization, and you'll already be 30,000 steps ahead of where I was when I was in your shoes. Now, the next slide I'm going to show you is the basics of Anki. And again, this is stuff that this is foundational learning principles based in the way that we learn. This is not something that is just something I came up with on my own. This is something that's rooted in neurology. The way you want to make flashcards is you want to learn content first. There is no point in memorizing flashcards if you don't already have a schema into which those flashcards fit. For example, you can't just memorize random factoids if you didn't actually watch the lack watch the lecture from which those factoids arose. So the basics of flashcards are such that you should always watch and learn the content first. If you are a medical student, this means that you should watch the relevant lectures, whether that's in Boards and Beyond, Pathoma, or even in your medical school, before you do the flashcards related to those lectures. 
the, that brings me to my second point. Your own cards will always be significantly better than pre-made cards. You may be wondering, how do you make good flashcards on your own? I have videos on that and I'm going to definitely link them below. But your own cards will be monumentally better than pre-made cards because when you make your own cards, you are already forcing your mind to go through the exercise of understanding, okay, what is this concept? How do I understand this concept? What about this concept is important? When you make that flashcard, you've already done that first pass of the material. If you're using someone else's flashcards, you're using a pre-made deck, as great as it may be, you didn't make that. And so the problem is you don't have that first like run through. And secondly, if a flashcard doesn't make sense to you, you can't substantiate it. You might just memorize it for the sake of memorizing it. And then in your head, it's just a random factoid. You don't actually know where that original um, idea comes from, right? Mary Curie says, you should never be afraid of something. You should only try to understand it. But the problem is if when you're just memorizing flashcards without any actual context, you're not even doing any understanding at all. And that's usually what these big tests are testing. And that brings me to my third point, which is memorizing without context is 100% useless. It is, you might as well just have not memorized it at all. If you have no idea the foundations of, you know, femur uh, pathology or even um, uh, osteo um, can <laughs> cancers of the bone, there is no point in just memorizing random factoids related to those cancers. If you don't know what osteoblasts are, you don't know what osteoclasts are, you don't know what osteophytes are, and you don't know how they all come together to create the dynamic remodeling of bone uh, day to day, then there's really no point in memorizing what an osteosarcoma is at that point, right? There really is no point. If you don't have that foundation, this osteosarcoma fact you know, may as well just be useless. So it's really important that you memorize with context. You do the lecture and then you memorize. And this last tip is probably the most important tip I could give you. Um, quantity is almost not nearly as important as quality. And so try not to make too many flashcards. The last thing you want is to create 80,000 flashcards that you cannot do before your exam. It's much better to create fewer flashcards that you may know are not cohesive but at least you can get through them before your exam. And trust me, if you can get through them before your exam, you will definitely pass. And chances are you'll pass with flying colors, right? So with all of this being said, I'm gonna now bring all of these things together into my Anki, uh, kind of demonstrate to you how it all works. And hopefully it helps you, because again, this is a one-on-one course, so hopefully just jamming everything in together will uh, provide more insight. So let me now jump onto the small screen and show you how Anki works. All right, so welcome. You can see that so far I have a blank Anki and I, I started this deck that says just started school. And uh, within that, I'm going to create sub decks. And you do this by putting two colons. And so you do colon, colon, and you'll see that I'm making a sub deck called anatomy. And within anatomy, I'm creating another sub deck called week one. And now if we go back to the main screen and you go into your deck, you can see that I have made those uh, two sub decks visible. You can see anatomy and week one. Within week one, now I'm going to do a further subclassification and make it week one lectures, right? So now I have within week one lectures. Now the next thing I want to do is change the, uh, the card type to close. Close is just a different card type that I'm going to show you how to utilize, but it's the most common card type that will be useful for you if you're going to be using Anki. You had to add cards, so you click add. And you can see that I have closed deletion picked, which is perfect. And you can also see I have the right deck picked, which is the lectures. So now we're going to, like, let's say we have a lecture in anatomy. We are going to utilize um, this format. I usually have the lecture on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, I have my card. And you'll see that as I go through the lecture, I will actually take notes and create flashcards from those notes. Again, the very important part here is that I am creating my own flashcards related to the lecture prior to going and using pre-made cards. The other thing you can also see is I usually take a screenshot of the relevant material and put it in the extra column. So that way when I come back to this flashcard, I actually have a full context of where I'm getting this information from. And usually I'll add some level of supplementary notes as well. You can never have too many examples. So here's another one. In this video, I came across another concept, which was a club cell. So I made a question and answer closed deletion. The one thing I will point out here is your flashcards should be very concise and they should also be one way. In that, I mean that you should not have an ambiguous question as your flashcard. You always want to make, make your question very pointed so that way the answer is very clear and there can't be more than one answer to your flashcard and that way your brain won't get confused. And again, you'll notice how I put 
supplementary information in that black in that back extra column because this will show up when you show the answer to the flashcard. And usually on top of the information, I usually also include a screenshot of the information to give me full context of where it's coming from. At the end, I make the closed deletion and I cut off uh, the video. And the closed deletion I make by usually typing Control Shift C. And now, lastly, I want to show you how I use other cards in existing decks and I pull them into lecture. So once I've gone through the lecture on my own, I will often search through the existing database of cards I have, which include pre-made decks. And if I find cards that are relevant, I will move them over to the deck that's relevant. So you'll see here I'm selecting three cards and I usually press Apple D and that allows you to switch decks and I pick the deck I want to move it to. So in this case, it's week one lectures. Here's another card I found. Apple D and I move it over to the med school deck uh, that I just started and so that's the overall gist that I use. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As you can see I watch a lecture, I make my own cards and only then do I pull in existing cards from existing decks such as the On King deck, uh, Bros and Cephalon, whatever it is. There are pre-made decks out there but I only bring in those cards after I have uh, my solid foundation of the concepts. And this is not something I do just in med school. I've been doing it in undergrad and I actually do it for stuff in business school. And I've actually been using this tactic to learn how to invest as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.